Good day, Alaska. Just wanted to give you a quick update on the uh, COVID-19 virus that we've been dealing with for several months now. Um, as we remember, back in February and March, we really didn't know what this virus was going to do. Uh, we didn't know uh, to the extent how many people would be infected, how many people would be hospitalized, and how many people would die. We've learned a lot since then, a lot. And what we've learned is this, that all this, this virus is highly contagious, and it is highly contagious. Uh, you, you've seen where the president uh, was infected. Millions of people have been infected. And the chances are that millions of people more will be infected. It's a highly contagious virus. But what we also learned is this, that it's not as deadly as we once thought. Not even close. This is a good thing. We've learned that it does not impact children uh, like the seasonal flu does to the extent it does. This is a good thing. So I'll give you an example here in Alaska. From, from roughly March to June, uh, our hospital rate for those affected uh, with COVID was about 10%. From June to today, here in October, early October, that has been reduced down to 2 to 4%. So in other words, even though our case numbers are going up, the hospitalization, hospitalizations and the death rate are going down. That's because we understand this virus more and better. We understand how to deal with folks that are infected. We've learned how to isolate and try and keep the virus away from those that are vulnerable, like our seniors or elders and those with underlying health conditions. Now, nothing is going to replace individuals taking action on their own to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their neighbors. And this includes wearing a mask when you're in a, a setting with others, uh, avoiding contact with others outside of your family if you don't need to make that contact. But I just want to make sure that we understand, none of us should be terrified today. None of us should be scared today. We should be concerned. We should make sure that, again, we take all the precautions necessary to prevent ourselves from getting the virus. The chances of you going into a hospital if you get the virus is slim, but it does happen. The vast majority of Alaskans, the vast majority of Americans that are infected with this virus oftentimes don't even know that they have the virus. They're asymptomatic. And so what I'm trying to say is this. We've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about this virus. The death rates are going down even though the case numbers are going up. And we anticipated that the case numbers would go up. This is no surprise. And this will continue to happen. At the state level, we continue to deploy our resources to make sure that we have the hospital capacity we have off-sites in case we need to use those off-site hospitalization capacity uh, centers in Fairbanks and here in Anchorage. And we'll stand up others if we need to. We still have strike teams, as we call them, for folks to go into uh, areas where the virus seems to be taking a foothold and growing rapidly to be able to arrest that growth. And so the long story short is this. This virus is not the extinction event we thought it was going to be. Does that mean we shouldn't be concerned about it? No, we should be concerned. But it doesn't mean we should be scared. It doesn't mean we should be terrified. It doesn't mean we should uh, hole up somewhere. But again, avoiding certain things, if we can do that, in terms of being in crowds without a mask, uh, making sure that we wash our hands, those are all good common sense um, uh, practices that we should do that we understand will help mitigate the spread of the virus. But as we wait for this vaccination that will really take care of this, in the opinion of many, we have to learn to live with COVID. We have to get back on our feet. We have to start moving forward. And that's what we need to do here in Alaska. So I just want to give you a quick update that although our case numbers are rising, it's not unexpected, but our hospitalization rates are falling and our death rates are falling as well. We protect our elders. We protect those that are most vulnerable. We're going to get through this. So again, Alaska, I'll update you uh, periodically, but I just want to uh, give you just a couple minutes on where we are today with this virus. So now I'd like to turn this over to Jared Cozen, who is in charge of the Hospital Association here in the state of Alaska, and he too will talk about some of the case numbers in the hospitalization. I'm Jared Cozen, the President and CEO of the Alaska State Hospital and Nursing Home Association. There's been a lot of questions about ICU capacity, hospital capacity, and kind of the health of our system today. What I want to do is share some of the data we've been looking at at the association and really give you our take on how the situation is presenting itself. To do so and to really keep it simple to start, we'll just look at the Anchorage beds and Anchorage hospitals and kind of go from there. The first question we want to ask is, are we seeing an unusual number of ICU patients coming through the door? And the answer so far is no. 
This month in October on a per day basis, we're averaging about 57 patients in an ICU bed in Anchorage. Last month, the average was 54 patients. The month before that, in August, it was 53. And then in July, it was 56. So, so far, trends are consistent with ICU patients. Now looking at ICU patients who are COVID positive, who are in an ICU bed, thankfully, the trends are pretty similar. On a per day basis, we're averaging about 9.6 COVID patients in an ICU bed in Anchorage. In September, the average was 9.1. Finally, overall hospitalizations. Are we seeing a rise in the number of COVID hospitalizations so far? And again, thankfully, so far the answer is no. In October, the average number of COVID positive patients in a hospital bed in Anchorage has been 25 per day. In September, the average was 29, and in August, it was 28. So I guess the takeaway for us at this point in time is hospital capacity is holding up. We are managing the situation, and the situation's been pretty consistent over the last couple months. And I'd also add, this is the busy time of year for hospitals. If we were to look at statistics a year ago, pre-COVID, if we were tracking this level of data, it's reasonable to believe that we would actually see the same or higher patient volumes coming through the door because of flu season, the fact we'd all be in our schools and we'd all be mingling about. So again, I guess I'd say the takeaway is hospital capacity is intact, we're able to manage it, but the ultimate indicator is obviously community spread and that continues to climb. And I think we all need to do our part as individuals to mitigate that spread. That means wearing a mask, washing your hands, and practicing social distancing. Thanks.